Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a wonderful day. As you can see, the portfolio is still doing all right. Um, recently, you've asked me so many questions and this morning I decided to go through every single question and answer them. And the questions that I couldn't answer, I've now put them together in this video. So I'm going to answer some of the questions that I could not answer basically by just writing. Um, so I'm going to talk about them um, and give you as much information as I possibly can. Um, but as you can see, the portfolio is still going up and down. The market, US market is not open yet. The UK markets are not open today. I think they start tomorrow again. So yeah, overall, everything is going well, alhamdulillah. So let's get to the first question. And the first question is, one of the brothers have asked me um, about lows. Recently, he said that I've talked about lows in one of the videos where I've actually gone through every single company in my portfolio and talked about what I am what I will be doing in terms of from Shreya compliant, where they are now and what my plans are. And Lowe's were what basically was one of the companies where I had a question mark um, because the debt levels, okay, was actually quite high. So the interest bearing debt was about 27 point something. So it's not, I didn't say it was basically not Shreya compliant, but I, what I said was it was heading that direction. And since then, the market cap has actually, the stock went down last week, okay? And because of that, it's now actually in, I think it was 31.4. If you look at their current market cap divided by the, um, the interest bearing debt um, divided by the market cap. So you will see right now, even if you go into Zoya's and so on, it will be actually basically not sure how compliant. So I've got a video coming up and I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do with this company because like I said before, I was worried about their interest debt interest um, um, basically in terms of their debt levels as well as obviously Amgen was the another company that I talked about so I will let you know exactly especially Lowe's what I'm going to do with in the next couple of days inshallah okay so that is that first question the second question came from another brother where he asked me what my current salary is and how do you determine what percentage of your monthly salary you invest and then how I budget. So those are the three questions. The first one, I can't give you obviously an answer, but Alhamdulillah, my wife and I get paid really well. And for that reason, we are able to save a lot of money. We are quite, so one of the reasons we're actually able to save quite a bit is we kind of live a kind of frugal life if you like, okay? And the reason I said that is because we, we do have a spreadsheet. So that's how we budget. We put our, all our expenses, all our income, and then basically monitor everything. We do have an account where we just, as soon as we get paid, the money that we're spending every single month goes into that account just to stay disciplined, okay? So we don't touch our savings and so on. And that's very, very important. Because otherwise, you you know, you, you've you got your credit cards and bank, um, your debit cards, and you're going to walk around, and then you see something you like, you're just going to stick in there and just buy it, buy it, buy it, and before you know, you actually spend more than, I don't know, 50% of your monthly income. So one of the reasons we do, one of the things we do is we have a different account. We put everything in there. We have a spreadsheet to monitor everything. And because Alhamdulillah, our salaries are okay, we try to save every, as much as we can. Now, if we wanted to, we can invest up to 70% of our income. Okay. Sometimes we can even go slightly more. Okay. But right now because we have other plans inshallah that we will discuss at some point in 2023 we're trying to minimize it to 50 percent however having said that i still have i think i'm going to put a little bit more money obviously in the next couple of months because i still have about seven and a half thousand pounds to invest before my eyes account runs out which basically is i'm determined no matter what happens to make sure that i max out the third year in a row okay i've already done twice I'm going to do the third year, inshallah. So that's the plan. Even 2020, when I opened this account, basically I opened, I think, April of 2020. And from that time, from April to the end of that year, basically, I've managed it to, it was, I think it was April, yeah, just a couple of weeks after the allowance was given. So that year I've maxed it, and I've maxed it 2021 and 2023. So inshallah, we'll see if I can do the, the basically again this year in 2021, 2022. Um, so yeah, that's that. hopefully that answers your question. But like I've always said to you guys, budgeting is the most important thing. You have to have a budget. You have to understand where your money is coming from and where it's going. If you don't know, then what's the point? Genuinely, you're going to struggle. You can make money here, 
but you're just going to spend it anyway. So what's the point? So you need to have that discipline, inshallah. I hope you answer basically that answers your question, brother. And if you have any other questions, just let me know. I'm, I'm quite open, but obviously I can't tell you exactly how much we get paid. The next question comes from another brother who asked me about realty income, whether it's halal or not. Um, because he said different portals actually say different things. I'm going to give you exactly how you can actually determine this. Okay. So the company he's talking about is this company, Realty Income. Okay. This is a REIT. This is, I think is monthly, pays monthly. I would actually love to invest in this company because of the dividend side of it. They actually have a quality business and so on. A lot of their properties are rented to big companies and so on. And they have a solid dividend every single month. Now, in order to find out, so there are three things you're looking for from the business perspective. Is the business selling Sharia compliant stuff? So is it halal what they're selling? Are they selling goods and services that are Sharia compliant, that are not haram? They're not going into selling alcohol and that kind of thing, right? Second thing is the interest bearing debt. So the debt levels, okay? And then the third thing is the interest bearing securities. Basically, the amount of money they have, they're giving it out and then they earn an interest on that money. That is make sure, we need to make sure that stays between 33, 30 to 33, depending on who you talk to, 30 to 33, okay? That's the safe, um, in basically, range. Now, to find the interest bearing debt, so the business, you can do that yourself. You can go into their website, read about everything the company sells. In terms of interest-bearing debt, you just need to look at the market cap and the debt level. So the debt level divided the market cap, let's do that quickly. Okay, that should give you, okay, so 16.89 divided by um, 40.51. Okay, that gives this times by 100 to get the percentage. So that's 40, let's call it 42%. So you know straight away this company is not Sharia compliant because it doesn't meet that criteria. Up to 33%, 30 to 33% or below 30% is what I prefer. Anyway, 25% or less are what I prefer. But sometimes they go up because of the market cap. If the market cap goes up again this week or say, for example, 10 whatever percent, then this actually changes. So that's why you shouldn't be doing this calculation every single week. I'd rather do it every um, every quarter and then look at it from that perspective. If you do every week, you're just going to run into problems because the price goes up, the market goes up, market cap goes up and so on. So that's the first one. That's the easy one to do. The second one is how do you find the interest bearing securities? Um, securities, exactly. So if you go to the company's website and you look for the 10Q or 10K, whatever, okay, it up basically you get this massive document of 75 pages if you scroll down so this comp basically this is for every single company if you go to financial statement and look for cash and cash equivalents okay for this year is this much here okay then you just need to do the calculation so it is this comp okay divided by the market cap and then obviously that should give you the number that you're after or basically divided by 10% divided by 100% um, that should give you the number that you're after. So let me show you now. Okay, so this number, just remember that number and I'll show you exactly what Zoya um, has in on their website, on their app. So according to Zoya, so the ticker symbol is O, it says it's non-compliant. From business perspective, it's 100%, no issues. So they think the business is doing fine in terms of Sharia compliance side of it. Now, the next one is the interest bearing debt, and that is almost a 50% according to them because the market cap they used at the time was lower. So they use in current market cap, is, we've just seen it is 40 something, right? Um, but they have a 36, okay, 36.5. So the total debt, which is this number that we've seen already, divided by the market cap. We've seen that already here. So where we talked about, eight, okay, 16.89 is the market cap and as you can see here 16.1 sorry 18.18 so the market cap the base of the debt levels actually they have here is slightly more than what they have here okay so that could change so they've updated this i think they updated this 3rd of november 2022 so since then it's actually changed maybe okay so they might pay it off some of the debt and so on so that's the first one and that's like i said is an easy one to calculate the second one is the interest bearing securities. And this one here 
is the cash and cash equivalent plus deposit times by the uh, divided by the market cap so you've got those two numbers okay and that will give you basically 0 0.51 if you divide by one uh, ten, uh, 100 percent so that's it so those are the numbers that you're after go to the company's website find the 10q and 10k or whatever and then look for cash and cash equivalent and use that number for the year that you're after so that was for december for 2021 this is for september 2020 so since september if there's a new one that came out look for it and find that number wherever that number is i hope that is helpful to your law because i think three different people asked me this question i hope so people are not unhappy with me to be honest with you i actually would love to work with them if they because they make so many mistakes and so on i've corrected them so many times i've given the feedback so many times it would be amazing if they can actually be on board with us and maybe just give the brothers and sisters in this community a discount to because it is quite pricey i think it's like 10 pounds or something per month so it would be quite nice if they can give us some discount if you're watching this come and talk to us inshallah right so let's talk about the next question and this one was actually a question from yeah this was regarding um properties and the brother was asking questions about um he said i hope to see you around in the future so i'm just reading the question could you save money in the savings okay so his question was basically you're buying a property and you want to save the money obviously in a, uh, to buy that property where do you put that money what did you do so i recently bought in 2020 basically this year um, beginning of this year march i think it was i bought a property the money that i used was free basically cash that cash was actually sitting in my account for i think about six months then i made the decision to invest it with my brother i did not put money into the stock market that i was using for that property and i'll tell you why in a second so i spoke to my brother and his business partners I've asked them if instead of just the money in sitting here, if I can leave it with them, if they can make sure that money is safe, number one, and if I can have it back when I need it, okay? So I think a year and a bit before I um, needed the money, I gave them the money. And I gave them, I think, 70% of that money. And I think I made about 700 to 7,000 or $8,000, I think it was. Let's call it 6,000 pounds. So I gave it to them, alhamdulillah. They were really nice and reliable. That my, you know, my blood brother and his business partners, they were quite nice about it. Initially, they said no because they didn't want to add. But then I kind of convinced them to give me the opportunity just to add. And I said, listen, I might need a year or so. I need to buy, the, I need to use this money for uh, to buy a property. I don't want it to sit in the bank and inflation eat it away or put it into stock market. And if it tanks, then I'm going to get be in trouble. Okay, so they did a favor for me. The rest of that money was in my account. And then I started putting some money into the stock market straight away. So I have not invested and will never invest money in the stock market that I need in the future. If I am buying a property and the money that I need to buy that property is in the stock market. And imagine the stock market goes down 10, 20 percent and which is possible, right? Because we've seen it this year. It's gone down, what, 20 percent this year, right? What would you do? You're stuck. You're going to hate yourself. So don't do that, please. Whatever you do, you should never invest money in the stock market that you need in the next year or two. Only if it's five, ten years from now on, then fine. But if you need it for the next year or two, please do not put that money into the stock market. Because what might happen is, imagine if you bought, I don't know, companies like Meta this year, at the beginning of the, I mean last year. And you put £10,000 that you need this year, for example, for deposit for a house. Right now, you'll be looking at about three, £4,000 of that money, if not less, right? So you have to be careful. So you can't do that. Whatever happens, either leave it in the bank okay um which i have done for almost a 30 percent of that money i'll find it for relatives and family members who are willing to give back that money when you need it and invest it even if you don't make any extra money on top of it at least it's safe at least it's not sitting in a i don't know eating with inflation even if you get 10 one percent two percent from these guys that's worth okay or even look for a basically some sort of a some of these banks that now offer not i can't call it interest but it's more to do with um what is it, a profit sharing if you like so they use your money 
and they give you some returns okay profit sharing but the danger is if you lose it does that mean if they lose that money or something happens um, what happens is it guaranteed I, I haven't looked into that so if you know someone who knows more about it please do that but don't put it into the stock market okay the next question I want to answer quickly is the a brother asked me a question about SCHD which is an ETF that ETF basically is not Sharia compliant. He wanted to know whether Sharia compliant or not. Um, it's definitely not, okay, because it has loads of loads of different companies from all sorts of places. There is by far one of the best performing ETFs this year, and it has loads of different stocks in there. I recently did a video on the stocks that are on that ETF that are halal. So have a look at that. It's definitely not a halal itself. I think we've got two more questions the next one is also about property investment and this brother was asking whether to buy a kind of victorian converted into flats or basically buying a typical flat house whatever um typical flats basically in the uk right i bought a normal kind of flat and um, the reason i did that i was actually looking for like a victorian old house kind of converted into flats because the um what is it called the service charges is way cheaper if you buy normal flats it's actually a lot more expensive i am paying about thousand pounds a year for the services charge because my building is huge and they need to clean it they need to paint it they need to maintain it and it's actually beautiful and looks nice and everything but someone has to pay for it but if you can buy a converted house okay into flats whatever which is what i was looking for at the time and i found one but i blame my best friend because he was very like the room was very small but the rental income was exactly what i'm getting right now at the time so he convinced me not to buy it and i was like okay fine let's do it let's look for something that's a bit slightly bigger i didn't think about this as just as an investment and i'm not going to live in it i shouldn't care about who lives in what how big or small it is and so on but yeah so i would definitely prefer something that is smaller because their interest because of the service charge will be way way cheaper than if you were to buy if you were to buy a huge building and the service charge is going to cost you this and that the other question is a little bit difficult one to answer because the brother was asking the returns from the my stock portfolio um i think um in comparison to the property um, or in basically comparing the iShares, sorry, iShares returns, okay, that we talked about last time in comparison to buying a property. And that's quite difficult because it all depends, okay, it depends on the type of the property that you bought, it depends on how much income you're making from that property, it depends on loads of different things. And for that reason, I can't answer that question directly. But one of these days, what I will be doing, inshallah, is by the time we hit a one year mark, I'm going to look at exactly how much money I made from my property and then compare it to my portfolio and that will give you an idea and we can even compare it with other ETFs and so on but the portfolio and the house that's what I'm going to do inshallah March time when we hit one year I can do that so yeah just wait for until inshallah we get to one year mark but I'll tell you right now um, I think the property might be winning right now because um, the house price and if I was to sell right now plus the rental income that I've made you right you're looking about 15 to 20 thousand pounds price appreciation as well as the because I looked at it recently um, the same building they had a one bedroom apartment they were selling and that they were selling it for 95 000, 90 thousand pounds sorry 90 thousand pounds and mine costed about 70 something thousand so and mine is basically one bed as well so with negotiation you could potentially get it for 85 84 83 whatever but that from 70 that's 13,000 for to 15,000 pounds up um up as well as the 5,000 or so that I've made already on from just the rental income so that's 20,000 pounds this is that that's why it it's really important to invest in properties and we'll talk about more of this inshallah in 2023 onwards the other question is one of the brothers asked me about apple i haven't spoken about apple um, stock recently so i will be doing a video very soon so stay in touch basically stay in tune for that one inshallah and the final question that i want to answer comes from a no, I lied. Actually, two more questions. So one is, is the S&P 500 include um, basically non Sharia compliant companies? Absolutely. That's why we can't buy the whole um, index. 
So it has thousands of companies in there. Well, not thousands, 500 and best companies in there. And probably about more than half of that might not be Sharia compliant. So yes, the answer is they are not Sharia compliant. So stay away from the buying the whole index. If you can just buy Sharia compliant ETFs, if you prefer ETFs. And I will be updating, I will be doing second video on the ETFs, the US ETFs, inshallah, in the next couple of days. I think one Canadian, one US, and a couple of UK ones as well. Final, final question, I promise, right? This one comes from a brother, and he said he's 50, um, and right now he talked about a couple of stocks that he's owned and sold, so and sold, and whatever. But the most important thing that he talked about is basically he's right now teaching his 16 year old daughter, okay? And I just read that and I thought that hit me. That was, to me, that is more important than anything else what we're doing here. That education, that helping your family and making sure by doing what you're doing, brother, with your daughter, I absolutely love it because, inshallah, by the time she gets to our age, she will not be in the rat race. If she starts investing right now, even if she, you can open her custodian account and put £10 for her every single week. Every, she's 16. If you live in the UK, she can get her national insurance card tomorrow and get like, a, I don't know, £30 a week and invest every penny of it. I promise you, by the time she's 25 to 30, she could potentially have a million pounds in the account and will never need to work ever again. That education is absolutely important. And if you haven't basically done that, if you're my age and above and you've got young people that rely on you, brothers and sisters, or whatever, please educate them. Because in the end of the day, the numbers don't lie. It's investing in the stock market properties and things like that will give you that freedom that we're all after. Right now, if I gave you the chance to quit your job and said to you, I'm going to pay you every single month this much, whatever basically your expenses are, would you not take that? Absolutely. So why not help our brothers and sisters and, you know, daughters, sons, whatever, to be able to be in that position, inshallah. And I absolutely, brother, thank you for sharing that. Genuinely love the fact that you teach your daughter. I've been trying to help my younger brother. And by the time my son gets into, my son is 10, he already knows half of the basically CNBC. We watch CNBC all the time in our household because I want him to understand the financial world. But obviously, don't forget you are basically doing Basically, this dunya is just just temporary, right? So don't forget the akhirah, but at the same time, have that balance. I, I'm sorry that this video is this long, but I wanted to answer every single question as detailed as I possibly could. If I could, didn't answer your question, ask me again, inshallah, and I'll try my best. Brothers and sisters, have a wonderful day. If you are still here, please give the video a like, okay? It really helps the channel. Assalamu alaikum. Take care.